Welcome to Biz Filing's Expert Insights. Hi, I'm Greg Corumbus. Our guest this week on Expert Insights is Mike Enright, Service Manager at Biz Filings. Today, Mike is here to discuss the reasons you may want to seek a professional entity for your business and how they differ from more common entity options. And Mike, thanks very much for being with us. Good to talk to you again, Greg. Thanks. Well, it's great to have you back. Uh, today, we're specifically talking about entities called professional corporations, or more commonly known as PCs, and a professional limited liability company, or PLLC. How do you define these entities? Yeah, in, in short, PCs or PLLCs are specialized entities that are organized and operated solely by licensed professionals such as attorneys, accountants, and doctors. So, in other words, anything that requires a license in a particular state oftentimes will need to be formed as, as a PC or a PLLC. In our line of work, we're seeing an uptick in companies like this being formed. Um, for example, expansion of medical-related companies into additional states or attorneys, accountants, might be starting their own practices. And like I said, we're seeing an uptick in, in these types of entities and some expansion. So it's a good time to learn about this. How exactly is a professional corporation or a PLLC formed? Yeah, in a lot of cases, the basic mechanics of forming them are the same. You're, you're going to want to choose a name. You're going to create articles and file them with the Secretary of State. Obviously, you'll need to be licensed in that particular profession in order to do it. In a lot of cases, most cases, in fact, states are going to require a copy of that license with your formation documents. Some actually don't, though. Um, when, when we form corporations, professional corporations, that is, we always require a copy of the license just to make sure that, that the individual is, is you know, licensed in the, the field that they're going into. The name chosen will need to be a little bit different. It'll need to have a different ending, um, typically PC or PLLC instead of corp or, or inc or LLC. And you may have to call out the profession that you're operating under in the name. For example, you know, if you were a dental service, you may need to have dentist or an abbreviation, DDS, something like that in the name. The types of services that require PC or PLLC can vary from state to state, but if you're offering medical, legal, financial services, odds are you'll need to form as one of these entities. There's actually some other licensed service that could require it. One that we're asked about a lot is real estate or real estate brokers, and that's one that depends on the state. So, you know, you'll want to check with an expert um, like us here at Biz Filings to see what those requirements are and explain, you know, what your state's requirements might be. Is that a requirement? In, in most cases, the answer is yes. If you want to make reference to one of those services in, in your name, you'll, you'll need to form a PC or a PLLC. Anytime you put medical or legal services on formation documents, it typically gets additional attention from state examiners. And if it's not done right, there's a good chance it could be rejected, which can be costly both from a time and money standpoint, just because the filing has to be resubmitted. There are a few instances where states leave it up to the business owner uh, to determine if they want to file as a PC or PLLC. Um, and actually, in some states, the PLLC is, is not recognized. So, so filing a professional corporation would be the only option in those cases. So what are the main differences here between um, regular corporations and LLCs compared to these professional entities? Yeah, structurally, they're, they're very similar. I mean, corporations are going to have directors and, and officers and shareholders, and, and one individual can hold all of those positions. For LLCs, you're going to have members, and again, one person can hold those positions. In, in fact, with these professional entities, it's often just one person that, that's holding them. I alluded to this a minute ago, but there's a lot more variance in the requirements from state to state, <clears throat> and actually this variance is why a lot of filing services don't offer the formation of professional corporations or LLCs. One recent example that's come up recently is that um, regulations around expansion into new states are, are more strict. So, for example, you can't um, take a Georgia professional corporation and register it as a foreign entity into Florida because Florida doesn't allow for foreign professional entities into their state. You have to start a new domestic Florida professional corporation. Another difference is that special approval is often required. So if you want to offer medical practices or use the word medicine in your name, the filing may need to be sent to a special approval board first to make sure the license is legitimate, to make sure that, you know, the, the individuals are current in all of their licensing. This, is, uh, this approval is also something that we can help with with our services. So, again, there's not many differences in the structure of the company. The differences are more from state to state and some of the additional hoops that you have to jump through to, to form them. 
Mike, you've done a terrific job explaining who's eligible for a PC or a PLLC and how these entities differ from a typical LLC or, or a corporation and so forth. What other advice would you offer to someone trying to really drill down here and make a decision on this soon? Yeah, it's a good question and a question we get from professional entities and non-professional entities. A lot of it has to do with just the structure that you feel like you'd be more, more, most comfortable with. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago some states don't allow for professional LLCs, so in those cases the decision is kind of made for you. We do have a tool on our website called our incorporation wizard that can ask you some questions about the structure of your company and give you some feedback on, on what entity type is best for you. you know, we're, we're not legal advisors, so we can't specifically tell you, but we can certainly go through some of the benefits of each and lay those out. Another consideration here, Mike, of course, are ongoing responsibilities. What are the ongoing responsibilities of a professional corporation or a PLLC? Once formed, the ongoing responsibilities are, are similar to a standard corporate LLC. You need to file annual reports. You need to make sure that you're paying yearly fees to the state. So at a high level, they're, they're very similar. One thing that we find with these types of entities is that things can change pretty rapidly and you know, it's, it's a good idea to have a, a good registered agent uh, just to make sure that you're on top of any changes. You can They can communicate those changes to you, get you any notices that come from the state. So once you're formed, I mean, the formation of the company is probably the most challenging part. It's pretty similar, but you just want to make sure you're staying on top of all compliance issues. Finally, Mike, what resources are out there for business owners looking to learn more about this and making sure they've uh, considered everything before making this decision? The best advice that I can give is, is to speak with somebody that, that really knows what's going on. And, and oftentimes when, when we speak with professionals in the medical industry and, you know, dental, those types of things, um, they feel like, okay, you know, I've gone to years of schooling and, and I, I can handle doing this paperwork. And, and actually, you know, it, it can be a little challenging for anyone. So my, my advice is to speak with an expert. Um, we have a team that, that has done this for many years. We can file these types of entities in, in all 50 states. So certainly just, you know, speak with an expert on, on what might be best for you in these, in these types of situations. Well, having more options will hopefully give business owners even more clarity on what the right choice is for them. Thanks very much, as always, for your time, Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mike Enright is Service Manager at BizFilings. I'm Greg Corumbus, and for more information on this subject, please visit bizfilings.com. BizFilings, a Walters Kluwer company, has been incorporating businesses since 1996.